Hey guys, welcome to the third video of my series on concurrent programming in Python. In the last video, we tried to understand the concept of coroutines, which are one of the most fundamental components in um, concurrent programming. We also understood how do we define coroutines in Python using the async await syntax. And now it's time we learn how do we execute those coroutines um, using the async IO library in Python. So without any delay, let's get started. Before we learn how to use async IO, let us try to understand the basic concepts related to async IO. So here's a very simple definition related to async IO. So async IO is a built-in Python library which helps you to write concurrent, asynchronous and cooperative code in a sequential style. So now it is a hell of a statement which contains a lot of information written in a very concise style, right? So let us try to decode this particular statement one by one. So the first thing is that it helps you to write concurrent programs, right? So we already know what is concurrent. So just to refresh our understanding of concurrent, let us try to look, let us look at it again. So concurrency is nothing but a way of dealing with multiple things at once. So we call a program concurrent when multiple tasks are running and overlapping each other's life cycle, which simply means that um, while we are running a task, we are able to switch from that task to another task and after some time we can again switch back to our main task and this switching can happen can keep happening along the execution of these tasks so that is what concurrency is all about and yeah it is different from parallelism that we know so now that is concurrency and now the second thing is that async io helps you to write asynchronous programs so what is asynchronous so asynchronous is basically mean asynchronous means that you are not gonna wait for a particular let's say a function call so let's say in your program there is a function which is being called there and you do not wait for the return value of that function and you move on with your program whenever you will get the result of that function call you will use it as per your convenience so this particular behavior where you do not wait before proceeding is called asynchronous behavior and in this way actually your overall duration of your program becomes shorter which is quite good but in the case of synchronous what happens is that you are not gonna uh, move on to the next part of your program until the previous part is complete so in this way the overall duration becomes a bit longer as compared to the asynchronous programs so that is the difference and as we know async io will help you to write asynchronous programs and lastly we have something called cooperative code so let us let us see what is um, cooperative um, actually it is cooperative multitasking so there are two types of multitasking that we know about there is something called preemptive multitasking there is something called cooperative multitasking so in a preemptive multitasking you have a scheduler the scheduler is responsible for switching um, the control between different tasks so let's say you have three tasks task red yellow and blue then there is a something called a scheduler another main program which decides which task must be executing at a certain point of time so it gives equal time slices to all the tasks one by one and they keep on running so in this way the context switches that are happening in this particular case are actually quite inconvenient and you do not have any control about when the programmer wants to switch from one task to another but what happens with async io is that it gives you the total control of when do you want want to um, do context switching from one task to another so let's say you are doing the task red and whenever you feel like that you need to move to some other task you decide that and you move to that task let's say yellow then you do that then you move to blue so this is the particular case which we call as cooperative multitasking which simply means that there is no need of a scheduler actually um, the tasks themselves are cooperating amongst themselves right so that is what is happening in case of cooperative multitasking so all these three things make async io a great deal and async io is actually used at a lot of places async io is used as a foundation for multiple python asynchronous frameworks so wherever you need asynchronous behavior people use async io and it provides um, it helps in various places for example in networking and web servers it is also used in database connection libraries and it is also used in distributed task queues so these are all some applications of the async io library 
okay so now let us move on to the next question which is how do i execute a python coroutine so in order to execute a coroutine using um, async io what we need is something we call as an event loop so an event loop is actually a very basic thing which is at the core of every async application if you try to run any um, coroutine using async io you need something called an event loop an event loop is um, nothing but a thread which can execute all the tasks which are passed to it so now in order to execute a coroutine what I need is an event loop and how do I make it you have to just do async io dot get event loop in order to get a get an event loop object and then for that event loop there is a function called run until complete which takes any coroutine object as an argument and that coroutine object until complete is run there by that event loop and once that is done we move on to the next statement which is loop dot close which will simply close your event loop now this three line code can be converted to a single line code if you are using python 3.7 why because python 3.7 got a nice improvement or you can say a nice feature which is async io dot run which does the same task as above in a single line so you just do async io dot run in which you pass any coroutine object and until that coroutine object is completed um, this function call remains there so this is how it works this keeps running that um, coroutine so now let us see some example in order to understand how we are going to execute a coroutine so let us start with that example so let us say I have some coroutine let me call it a function called main in which I am not doing anything more than just having a print statement so this is a very simple um, you can say um, a coroutine or coroutine and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna import the async io library and then I'm gonna create an event loop async io dot get event loop and then what I'm gonna do is um, loop dot run until complete in which I will pass some coroutine object how do I make a coroutine object by calling a coroutine so I will do main and this will simply call my coroutine object and finally um, being a responsible citizen we should close that loop loop dot close and that's it so in this way I have written a very simple program what it does is that it just generates an event loop and that event loop is given some coroutine to run that coroutine will be run and finally that event loop will be closed and that's it that is all we need so let us try to do that using our terminal um, so python the name of the file which is tut1.py and let me run it and here we get the output hello so yeah in this way we have created a coroutine and then we have executed that coroutine so this is how you do it now let us um, move to the next thing which is um, how do I let's say block the execution of my coroutine for a few seconds right so how to block the coroutine for let's say some x seconds how do I do that so now to do that what you have to do is you can use await again but in await what you will pass will be some awaitable object which is capable of delaying the execution of program by a few seconds so for that there is something called async io.sleep so async io.sleep returns um, a coroutine which has the capability of delaying the execution of a program for a given number of seconds so let me show you that so now here I'm gonna do await await simply means that as soon as this uh, statement will be encountered the execution of my current coroutine called main will be stopped right there until my awaitable object is executed completely now what is my um, awaitable object it is async io dot sleep in which I have to pass an argument called delay which is the number of seconds for which I want the delay let's say 2 and then let me do something else so that we know that it was complete hello world so now it is a very simple example of a coroutine in which what we do is in the middle of the coroutine we simply say that hey I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna execute some other coroutine now how do I get that coroutine I'm just using an inbuilt coroutine which is async io dot sleep which is nothing but a very simple coroutine which takes um, any number of seconds as an argument and then it delays the execution of your program for that number of seconds so now um, let us see 
what do we get by running this function look at that hello then some wait and then world right so in this way we have used the concept of await in my example and now again um, just to show to those who are in love with python 3.7 how do you run this in a single line um, all you have to do is async io dot run in which you simply pass the name of your coroutine let's say main and that's it it will also produce the same result for me here so let us try to run look at that hello world so in this way we are able to um, execute this particular coroutine using a single line of python code so this is also the way and loop is also a way this is a much explicit way of doing this particular thing right so this was all about my basic introduction to async io library we learned how do we um, create an event loop how do we pass some coroutine to that event loop so that it could be run and how do we finally close that event loop we also learned how do we use async io dot sleep coroutine for delaying the execution of our program for a few seconds inside our coroutine and yeah so this is how it's done i hope the concepts are clear if you still have doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching